so exciting. I'm watching the YouTube page and it is not live. Not live. It's just showing like a dog with his ears out. Did you not like that picture? Should I switch that out quickly? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and the Facebook one is live. Well, that's exciting. YouTube is live. All right. Yeah, YouTube is working. Nice. Oh wow, it's on it's on delay. It, YouTube will delay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, so that's going to be interesting when like questions come in and stuff. They'll be a little bit yeah delayed, but no one's going to be in here, you know, but us. So. Well, if they follow the YouTube link, it'll be live. Yeah. It says you're live now. Someone said uh, special says, which is interesting. Who is special says? Who are you? <laughs> Hello, special says. It's funny, it is delayed like crazy, huh? Is my computer beep still coming through? No, I hear a little clicking, but that's it. Oh, okay. All right, so then there is the Christmas past is here too. Oh, hey, Trish, I can see you. Who's Trish? <laughs> <laughs> Good times. All right. So let's wait till around seven. So we have some time if you guys want to go grab something else, something to drink or um, have your stuff. <laughs> Look at this guy. Whoa. <laughs> well, Mr. To, Big Gulp. If you need to take a bathroom break, then. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's more likely. Yeah. Don't worry. I, I have a catheter in. I was waiting until you took a drink to say that. Is that especially for sheltering in place? Oh, no, it's just normal. I just normally, no. It's not. Nice. <laughs> I used to uh, I used to have a production company, and we did these, you know, a lot of audiovisual staging stuff for um, corporate event stuff, you know. Like mm -hmm. VMware was one of the ones we did years past. Um, but one Christmas, the boss gave everybody those uh, stadium buddies. You ever seen a stadium? Oh, jeez. Because <laughs> all those guys sit backstage and they can't leave, like, right? You know, they so they're a lot of them are stuck. So it was that was a big joke. So one one time he gave out stadium buddies to everybody. Do you know what stadium buddies are, Nick? I don't it's, think I do. It's but, you know what we can just let everybody look it up on their own. We don't have to just <laughs> we don't have to describe it. Okay, everyone go look it up. Um, I was kind of bummed they weren't like branded with our company name on there but oh jeez <laughs> all right so we have three viewers hi viewers hello everybody who's christmas past please tell us who you are and special says so how's work been going for you guys has it been go going good I mean, with this whole working at home, or do you work at home anyway? You don't, John. You go in. You were going in. I was normally going into the office, so it's kind of a change back to normal. What my previous gig normal was when I worked at VMware, I worked from home. Um, but so now it's kind of like back to back to that. But I'm I got spoiled by you know working at Google. You go into the office and get breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you want. Right. 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 So I know in Facebook, because somebody says hi, Mike, to me, the you can click a button in there to give them permission, StreamYard permission to put your name on there so we know who you are. Sorry to interrupt you, John. No, no, no worries. Yeah, otherwise. Um... Oh, it looks like Ben. It's Ben. Oh, okay. Interesting. But he still needs to do that, Ben. You still need to give permission. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's interesting. I know my life hasn't changed. So I always work. I mean, it's changed a lot, but I haven't. Um, I always worked at home. So, got it. Yeah, but my wife didn't. She got furloughed from her job, so she's home. Oh wow. Yeah, and we and we have the three year old too running around. So that's been. It's hard to get anything done. 
I've been just been getting up really yeah, early in the morning. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've been getting up early in the morning just to get work done. We'll wait till you add distance learning to that. Yeah. Do you have kids, Nick? I have a ten-year-old daughter. Uh, so. And you're doing school stuff with her. Well, I've done some. Fortunately, my wife's been able to help out some as well, so it's not completely on me. But there was the better part of one week where it was a lot me. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. We're we're figuring it out. She really misses her school and her teachers. Yeah. I know all my neighbors have two kids, basically. So out of our my daughter's bedroom, she can see the two boys that she plays with. And they're both around her age. Hmm. And she doesn't understand why she still doesn't understand why she can't go over there. So it's yeah. Know, it's just and no parks, no other kids, so it is hard for a single kid. Uh, Mike, it sounds like your um, Christmas past is saying that your mic not be your mic might not be angled correctly, or your levels are too low. I apologize, Christmas past. Is that better? No, I mean your mic still sounds kind of quiet to me. Can you turn the volume up on the sure, input? Sure. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that better? Ah, yeah, there you I go. I think that's uh, a lot better. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. All right. Who are you, Christmas Past? I wonder who Christmas Past is. Also, a strange thing to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering um, of the people that are here, Special Says, Christmas Past, and Ben. How many of you are already podcasters right now? And uh, what if if you are a podcaster or you're planning to be, what what topic are you podcasting on? I know Ben owned a studio. Oh, still low. Oh. Well, it might be off the delay. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, there's Lisa and Philip. Lots of people coming in. Ben owned a. San Diego owned a studio, uh, an audio studio. I I met him at one of these podcast events and he has a podcast and he is now, he could probably tell you and type this to you, but I just saw he got a job in Sacramento as a pastor, I think. Mm. So he's moving to Sacramento from San Diego. It's kind of the same, kind of the same job, right? Pod, podcasting and pastoring. Yeah. You're talking, yeah. Except for the pastoral care, that's that's extra. <laughs> but the just expressing your opinion about stuff—that's right. Yeah, it's hard to visit people. I mean, I guess you do it through virtual visits. Ah, uh, Brian goes to the SF. Sorry about my lowness here. I just threw my focus right stuff. I was telling John I have a studio over here that I put together yesterday, which I hadn't had, and I sat down to do this and I realized I didn't have <laughs> anything here to do this with. So I kind of grabbed an older focus right and this microphone. So I'm excited about my new my new studio again. My old studio mm. that's new again. It wasn't there for three years. Now it's back. So it's very exciting. <laughs> Oh, and you can, can you guys can read these, right? Yep. Okay. Good. Yep. Because yep. I know we can send them out. Philip, like, show it out. Philip says, uh, "I just talked to Philip the other day. He's just starting a podcast in nonprofits. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And then Brian, I don't know who Brian is. And then Facebook user says, "I'll be working with Caleb, the radio station. I'm doing a pastoral care for. Oh, that's that's Ben." And Ben, is that also you saying that you and your wife have a living room podcast, or is that a different Facebook user? I guess we it's worth saying again that if you're on joining on Facebook, I think you have to click a button to share your identity. Yeah. If you yeah. want to. Otherwise it just shows up as generic Facebook user. Also, if you answer 
a, a question that we ask, um, there's some kind of delay. So you might want to answer and restate the question that we're asking. <laughs> Where is that button he asks? That button, like you get a redirect from Facebook to a page before you can go into the StreamYard link. So you may just want to close all browsers, uh, open Facebook back up, and then click the link from the group, and then hit the OK. At least that's how it worked for me. I, I didn't go through the Facebook link, so I don't know exactly what, what that's yeah, like. I don't remember either. I went through the YouTube link, and then once we went live, it was so confusing to have my own voice like on a 15 or 30 second delay, so I, I just immediately closed out of it. Ah, Ben says he's on his phone too, so that's probably... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, people are wanting to come into the Facebook group now joining. My friend Chris Curran does a, uh, um, he does the podcast engineering school and he does a live stream every week with this. It's funny to watch. Like sometimes he'll have like a gazillion people and sometimes it's just him mm -hmm. <laughs> and one other person or nobody. Mm -hmm. Like I'll pop in there like, it's a funny thing. A lot of people are doing so much streaming nowadays. It's a good idea. Yeah, I feel I feel for a lot of people that are home alone through this. I have a I have a renter um, and a friend, another friend that had they live by themselves. It's been rough. This has been rough for them. We're oh, just having no imagine. human contact really. You know, they go for walks and stuff. And there was one thing that my friend Geraldine told me about. It's called quarantine chat, and it's like a phone number. You put your number in there, and you just get random calls from people who are also alone. And you just talk to them. It's like, <laughs> it's such a funny thing. But she says she's, she's older. She's in her, I don't know. Well, she's older and she's been really liking it. Just somebody to chat with, you know, she said she watched a movie with somebody the other day. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, they like were on the phone and it's like, right, they, right. It's like, I got it. I, it's like when I was young, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brian, I don't remember what your podcast topic was. Do you know Brian? Uh, I've gone to the San Francisco podcast meetup before, you know, yeah. a bunch of times, right? Yeah. So um, it's been a couple months just after I got my gig at Google. Um, it's been a little bit tougher to get over, actually, despite the fact that I'm in the city every day. It's been tougher to to get over there but i had a, a my neighbors went over there they were bored here and so they go let's go for a drive and they drove i live in oakland and they drove to san francisco and drove all through san francisco and then drove home and they did it in an hour and a half basically wow. and it was like that's just i mean normally it would take you like five hours or something to do that yeah. right it's just crazy my wife and i were dropping something off at, uh, to some friends and we took the um, the kind of the interchange off the 80, like just past the Bay Bridge. Like normally that's like 15 miles an hour for like two miles. And it was just like freeway speeds going over. And it was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Is that crazy? Let's look around and do that again, just, <laughs> just for the fun of it. <laughs> yeah. That's what they said. They just got a bunch of snacks and drinks and they just went over to the city just to drive around to look at houses yeah. and stuff. Like, <laughs> So my wife and I are like, we should go do that too. That'd be fun. We've been driving around Oakland a lot, like just oh, really? going for a ride. And it's crazy. People like still like around the lake. The the Henry J. Kaiser, I think that's the name of that big convention center up by the, the Lake Merritt down there. It's a huge convention. They have this, the, the, um, the uh, testing center thing set up there. I guess they're going to start testing people there, uh, but across the streets, the lake, and there's all these people just together. Like, I mean, they're all running around the lake and stuff, but they're all just right next to each other. It's just like, you know, it's just, it was 
very funny not funny it was just ironic to see them all like well, do you see what's going on across the street and you guys are all running around like hanging out on the lawn and yeah yeah anyway well i think that people feel cooped up and need to get out and it seems like a oh let's just go to lake merritt i'm sure we'll be the only ones and they're not the only ones mm -hmm. you know, so i feel a lot of sympathy you know my wife and i have the luck and that we can just kind of take a stroll around the block and it's pretty relaxed there's nobody around and we can just circle into the street but you know not everybody has that option yeah sometimes like the neighborhood they live in is no good for walking or it's just not walking friendly or any number of reasons but yeah it just feels dangerous yeah to be around we're, other people yeah we're very lucky here because we live in the oakland hill so there's just we can just walk it's been great i thought the cars flying around though to go for a walk yeah um okay so alice words asks what's the best part what's the best art of podcasting what's the best part of podcasting that's an interesting question oh yeah so, that is interesting what is the best part for you guys about podcasting I honestly, for me, it's <laughs> uh, Nick and I live in different cities, right? Nick is in the Dallas Fort Worth area and I'm in the Bay area. So it's kind of a way for us to maintain connection with each other. So we get to chat about things and it's almost like a, an excuse for us to catch up with each other and, and what's going on. So if you have a co-host, um, that's one benefit is maintaining contact with that co-host. I, I don't know, Nick, is that your experience as well? Not at all. I don't like talking to John. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys no, know just, did you guys know each other before? For Nick, that's work? the worst part. Um, yeah, that's the worst part. Did you guys work together then? Whoa, whoa. Hey, spoilers. That's that's part of the presentation. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. All part of the show, Mike. All part whoa, of the show. I didn't know. I wasn't I wasn't briefed on any of this. I apologize. Too bad we didn't have any time together. Uh, remind, okay. remind me to <laughs> remind me to put that into the presentation. Nick. There's still time. That's a good. There's that's time. A, it's definitely a good bullet point. To We've got ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes for the starts. There's. I, I mean, I enjoyed it because, like you said, I enjoy talking to you, of course. And, but I think even when just you and I are recording listening to some of the stuff you say and your perspective on things teaches me a lot. And the same with our guests. Oh, okay. I never thought to think that thing or think about it that way. That's really interesting. And, it, and sometimes it sparks, you know, creative ideas for other things. I, I just like to sit back and analyze and try to say something smart now and then. I have the same experience, Nick, like you'll ask a follow up question or, even when we're preparing and you you write down a question like, oh, why don't we ask about this? And I'm like, oh, wow, that's just, you know, it just goes to show you like different people have different perspectives and are gonna have different ideas. And, you know, the, the benefits of more than one perspective are always amazing. You know, you when somebody else like writes down how, you know, questions that they have about something, you get to see the inside of their brain and how that works. And, and that's always just a huge benefit. So that's, that's another per, uh, advantage. You get to learn how somebody else is thinking and maybe learn to think differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about worst part? We didn't answer that one. Um, is it the same as the best part? Having to talk no, to me? no, no, no. <laughs> You're the one who said that. No, it's, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's self-imposed schedule. I mean, that's, that's on us, right? So it feels bad when we have content out that's, you know, that needs to go through the post-production pipeline. And then I just run out of time. And it's like, oh, I guess it's going to be late this week, or I guess we're going to miss a week. That, that's not a good feeling. And I feel like, you know, it's not really our job, right? Like we're not, we're getting paid to do other stuff. So it doesn't feel great. Yeah. Or if I've, you know, committed to doing show notes by day X so that you can edit and I didn't get it accomplished because I was busy, then yeah, it doesn't make me feel great. I get it. 
makes total sense. Yeah, and we're partners, right? Like, so we share pre-production workflows and we share post-production workflows. So, you know, either one of us is an interruption, you know, to, so if one of us gets busy, you know, that's just life. So I think it's just learning to accept that. But I mean, I think we've been, I want to say about 80% with publishing every week. Um, I'll go 85. I okay. think it's been 85. How, Justin's asking, um, how do we promote? How do you guys promote the podcast? Is there a main social channel? Any budget? We definitely have zero budget. Like we have spent zero dollars promoting um, anything that we do because uh, there's zero dollars coming in, which I guess is one of the topics that we're going to be covering, right? Yeah. Um, so I think the way that we promote is mainly Twitter and LinkedIn, Bec LinkedIn, because we're a career focused podcast, um, you know, um, talking about technical careers and how to, uh, progress your pr technical career. So LinkedIn is kind of a natural place for us to discuss it, but then we're plugged into various, uh, communities on Twitter that we also broadcast, you know, out to a specific hashtag. So that's, that's how we've done it. And then I think tactically, um, it'll go out, uh, via the main channel, um, the main Twitter account, and then it'll co-publish on, on my LinkedIn account. And Nick will generally follow up about 24 hours later, Nick. Is yeah. that when you do it? Usually a day or two later on, on Wednesday or Thursday, because Tuesday's release day. And then on Wednesday or Thursday sometime, I'll just retweet it or use a different sort of lead in to describe it on LinkedIn and Twitter. And a lot of times I'll put it like in the VMware social media advocacy portal too. Actually, I've been doing that as a standard since that's a community that we've been a part of for a while. And a lot of times people will see that and they'll share it and that kind of amplifies the message. And then about 24 hours after that, aspirationally, I'll retweet. Um, I have about a 5% hit rate on actually doing that. So, hmm. but aspirationally, I definitely do it. So right, right. aspirationally, there's three hits, right? The main publishing, um, Twitter and LinkedIn, then Nick republishing 24 hours later on Twitter and LinkedIn. He's, 99% on that, I would say. And then 5% with a third follow-up from me. And we do have a dedicated Nerd Journey Twitter account. We don't have a dedicated LinkedIn account for it. Uh, can't remember if we grabbed other social media. We have a Facebook as well. It goes out on Facebook. Right. Um, I actually haven't logged into the Facebook in over a year. But it goes um, out automatically because I But it does them. go out automatically. Hmm. Have we been using keywords on LinkedIn? Uh, Ben's asking. That's um, I usually tag it with nerd journey hashtag and stuff like career podcast. I don't know how keywords work on LinkedIn. Like I think through the API, the WordPress API, it's not using like in the description, we'll use hashtags, but I don't know if that propagates out to LinkedIn um, yeah. as like a keyword. Yeah, you don't go through it, put keywords in there basically, right? You mean kind of like... Um, Nerd keywords? Like a search engine optimization style yeah. keywords, like if we we're trying to promote it as like a blog entry or something like that, or yeah. a page. Yeah. Um, like we try to put in the description what the thing is about, like why people would want to listen to this episode. So I don't think that we're doing any keyword packing, you know, but we definitely, you know, above and beyond like good description in the, and we're trying to keep it within the Twitter like word limit as well. So, you know, that's kind of the limit to the thoughts that we've been putting uh, there. Um, that's why he asked, he says, and I could see his posts before in YouTube, but that's why he's asking. Got it. That's interesting. I did a um, eight, 
Ahrefs, 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 you know that Ahrefs? Yeah. I did. They had a little, they had a blog, they had one of these things that uh, went out that was for, you know, people stuck at home, basically a free course. And it was all about keywords and blogging. And it was very interesting. I had, I had no idea for, about this stuff. It, it was fantastic, except they, you know, it all kind of points back to buying their, getting a membership that for their thing. But I kind of went around and, you know, of course, found other things because I don't, I'm not a blogger, but it was interesting to look at for the mm. future for doing blog posts around your, uh, your podcast posts. Right. Mm. And do you guys, do you guys do a, um, do you do a transcript at all? We don't do a transcript. We do show notes. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was what Nick was referring to. Right. Um, so after, you know, we have kind of the outline that we are planning, especially, when we do, Nick, uh, um, they're asking about like the posts that we do. Mm -hmm. So Nick does show notes. Um, and so it's kind of like an extract or like, you know, an outline format of what we talked about. Like maybe not everything, but, you know, kind of topic by topic. And that is actually quite a bit of work, but it allows us to create a blog post that actually has text content that somebody can go and read and understand what it is that we've talked about within the, 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 the structure of the show. And then the major points we actually put like a time code on. So mm -hmm. if they only want to listen to one section or something specifically jumps out, then they can go and listen to, you know, from that point exactly. Oh. Hopefully that's interesting enough to then go, oh, well, maybe I should listen to the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So you, Nick, you do this all these show notes? That's crazy. That's fantastic. I've, I guess, what ninety five percent of them. Yeah. John's had to pick up my slack several times. Do you, Do you do a <laughs> little AI kind of a thing? Dump the whole thing in and. No, I just oh, uh, I and just I... hit play on my phone and start typing and. <laughs> wow, that's great. Na Good natural point. intelligence. He does yeah. AI. <laughs> And then, of course, we put special links. Like if somebody mentions a book or, that they would recommend or an article they wrote or some video that they'd recommend people watch, maybe their social media information like Twitter and LinkedIn where they can be contacted, we'll, we'll put that in the show notes for sure. All right. Well, I have more questions, but why don't we get started with this since it is seven? Sure. And then um, afterwards, we can ask questions because I don't want to ask more questions that are part of your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why don't you guys uh, just get started? Just go ahead and tell a little bit about Nerd Journey, and then you, you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, just, absolutely. You know, yeah. Um, and then you have. I'm gonna. I actually am gonna jump off because it'll just be you guys on here. Okay. And slides, and I'm here though. So if you need me, I'll pop right back on. Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe if you can. Um, when Nick and I are on, one of us will watch, you know, whoever's not talking will watch the uh, live comments. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, we'll try to incorporate that and, and I'll, I'll everybody. Yeah. Okay. If you start saying one, I'll just pop it up. So, yeah. And, uh, everybody, we want to kind of make this as interactive as possible. So if you want to, you know, ask questions about something that we're chatting about, uh, again, there's a little bit of a delay, but you know, as much as possible, if you include the context of the thing that you're you're asking about, then uh, we'll try to to answer it right in line. Um, and then, if you want to save up your questions, which is fine too, we'll have a question and answer section at the end. My name is John White. Um, my Twitter handle is at bjourneyman, and this is Nick Cordy, my podcast partner. His hashtag hashtag. His his handle at uh, Twitter is uh, network nerd underscore, and we have a podcast called the Nerd Journey Podcast, which is nerd journey dot com. Um, and we're here basically to talk about um, our journey in podcasting, and uh, and talk about uh, kind of an alternate form of. Um, compensation. You know, a lot of people want to uh, have a podcast and then turn it into a career. And we have kind of an alternate take on that. So here we go. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, Mike, if you could pop that up. 
uh, as the main chair. Thank you so much. Um, so there it is. There we are, podcasting with your career in mind. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first thing is really to talk about um, just kind of give a roadmap of what it is we're going to talk about. Uh, the agenda, um, that's just uh, my business slide building uh, brain leftover, uh, just putting it in as an agenda. So we're going to talk about our story, kind of where we came from, uh, uh, how our podcast evolved, talk about getting paid to podcast, how, what the kind of typical um, compensation strategies are, and then talk about you know, podcasting with your career in mind, which is kind of our alternate compensation uh, strategy. And then um, again, we can take questions and answer, uh, give answers at the end. Um, we're happy to take them in line as well. So let's get started. Here's our story. Um, we, our podcast is kind of about uh, career progression and we're focusing in on IT professionals, technology professionals. It's not exclusive to IT and technology professionals, but you know we need to pick a niche, and and that's where we uh, both came from. We were both small and medium business IT people who ended up working as sales engineers. So that's part of a sales team where you're helping to sell a piece of software or hardware or some kind of solution, and um, I think that we both experienced this realization that when you get to that part of your career, it's a, it's something that neither of us had really considered it as a career opportunity or a career path. And it's a completely valid one. And we wanted to kind of um, expose other IT professionals to that process. Um, so once I was working at VMware, um, you know, as a sales engineer, I kind of uh, bumped into the host of VMware's uh, Community Roundtable podcast, Eric Nielsen, and he uh, asked me if I wanted to come on co-host. He said, "I'm looking for, I've been looking for a solution engineer, sales engineer to to come on and co-host and maybe talk about that technology a little bit, um, a little bit more. You know, from uh, I, I guess you know he is more on the social media and marketing side." Uh, so didn't necessarily know some of you know the questions to ask about the technology. So I was happy to do it. It was, it was funny because I had been a longtime listener of the Roundtable podcast before I joined VMware, and I just kind of assumed that it was done somewhere else. Um, and uh, so I joined, and I was on that for a couple of years until I left. Um, but uh, Nick, as, as Nick came on, maybe he can tell this, that part of the story. Um, because we, we had been buddies before. I should maybe give that background. And maybe, Nick, you can give that background. Sure. So John and I actually knew each other through a professional IT pro community called Spiceworks. And John told me about the solution engineer opening at VMware and actually helped me write my resume since he was already doing that job for VMware at the time. He gave me tips on you know, how to prepare to do that job, what it would be like. To, f to figure out if I could do it, number one, if I wanted to do it, number two. And and he encouraged me quite a bit during that process. And then, you know, with a lot of help from him, I made it through and got my dream job at VMware. And I'm pretty sure it was the weekend before I started. John sends me a message through Hangouts and says, we should start a podcast. And I'm like, you want me to be on a podcast, John? What, what would I contribute to that? And what would we talk about? <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. And that actually is a maybe a good transition into, you know, what the evolution of our topic actually was. Um, I realized that when I was onboarding at VMware, and I was, I don't know what, a year ahead of you, Nick? Is that right? Yeah, one to two years ahead, I believe. Yeah. Um, so I remembered that it was just a huge transition. There's all these new and different types of tools that I was using um, and different technology. And I kind of thought that I knew the technology that VMware, you know, did as a company. And then when I onboarded, I realized, oh, I knew this like small slice of it. And, uh, you know, I had my brain expanded and my vision of what the company was doing expanded. So um, I thought that that might be interesting 
to document as Nick came on board uh, because I had kind of gone through that transition and, and maybe that would be interesting to document. And um, it would be interesting because we were both part of this, you know, small and medium sized business IT community, maybe be interesting as kind of a VMware topic. Um, and uh, so I think company size role, like those were the, the kinds of, contrasting things that we were talking about, Nick, right? Like yeah. That. And just to give those of you who may not be in the technology industry an idea here, we basically went from being the guys that fix the computers and make sure the servers are running in whatever business you want to the people who sell stuff to those guys. Yeah. But can speak their language at a very technical level. Exactly. So, so that's kind of the job is to be somebody that, knows what their concerns are um, and then, but knows the technology solution well enough to be able to kind of pitch it and in a way that, that makes sense to them. So there'll be advocates inside. So, um, you know, that was, you know, one idea was kind of this evolution of joining a big technology company like VMware. What is that like? Um, what was the hiring process like? And then over time, I think we kind of, as we were practicing doing the podcast, I think we realized that what we were creating was not a VMware centric podcast. I mean, we had tried to talk about some like specific like company and technology topics and it just like, that's not where the interest lay for us. Like it was, it was a little bit more about that process of getting the job and all the preparation that we wish we had done earlier. And, you know, why didn't we do this faster? Like, why did it take so long for us to get here? And what can we do to help other people short circuit that? So that, you know, the that kind of figuring out what the topic was, we, we did over a period of months. And then, you know, once we realized what it was, then we just kind of focused in on that. Um, initially, I thought, oh, you know, maybe we can refer people in and, you know, VMware has like a referral bounty of, I mean, not insubstantial, like, you know, over a thousand bucks to refer somebody successfully into the company. But that, that just wasn't, that didn't make any sense. Like that happens not that often. And it's also just not that interesting to kind of be like position yourself as like a guru at getting somebody hired into the company that you're working at. It just seemed like too self-serving and, and also, I mean, it, I don't know, Nick, kind of a risk maybe if you're just kind of taking flyers on people that you don't know and, and you know, quote unquote, referring them without actually knowing them. That seems yeah. a little dangerous. Like, I agree. Not sustainable. Well, I, I have to say, John, at the beginning, and I probably told you this, I think I was leaning more towards staying on the technical side because that's been my wheelhouse the whole time. I was afraid that you know, something we might classify as on the softer side of, of topics, I wouldn't be able to hold my own and contribute anything. But I think we did, what was it, 10 to 12 shows that we had recorded to practice, to do the intros and outros, to, to figure out what was good and what wasn't. And like you said, there were one or two that were about some kind of technology news. And we were like, no, that doesn't really fit with the rest. Yeah, and it all it was super um, time dependent too. Like, if you're gonna cover that kind of topic, like tech news, like you have to like get it out, like within 20 hours. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the news cycle is the news cycle. So if you want to be like a journalist, then you have to be timely. If you want to talk about things that are a little bit more evergreen, um, then you have to kind of select your topics so that they are evergreen, you know, and today I talked to somebody and I was like, you should go listen to our second episode. You know, it was about interviewing, um, with an HR screener and you know, that's, that's not really going to, it's going to change slowly over time. Right. As, um, as society changes and, and that process changes, but it's not like, Oh, you know, this company had this release of the software and we're going to talk about it like that you know, three months later might not be relevant at all. So your entire back catalog becomes not actually a strength, right? 
Right. And that's where we came up with the phrase, we're giving listeners the career advice we wish someone had given us earlier in our careers. Yeah. Which I have since heard like other podcasts doing. <laughs> like um, not quite word for word, but almost word for word. Um, so I, I don't even think that we're that unique in this area. I just think that in this niche, right? So, um, you know, people coming from small and medium sized business IT coming to present like alternative forms of, of career paths, right? So that's kind of uh, where we landed is, you know, giving that advice to say, do what you're doing, but on a bigger scale, if that means moving to a bigger, more important team at the company that you're at, then that's great. If it means moving to a bigger uh, company, then maybe that that's, that's the case, you know, and alternative uh, career path too. And if it means coming and working at a vendor like we did, then that's yet another career path. So um, just expanding out people's minds. And, and that was pretty important to both of us. And I think kind of where we landed. Now, I think luckily those 10 episodes that Nick and I recorded, we, we had them banked. So we ended up kind of throwing away most of the tech stuff and just keeping um, the, the career focused stuff. Is my memory on that correct, Nick? Yep. Yeah. Right. And we found out things like some were way too long and yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. So we, we've evolved as podcasters. So um, uh, that's kind of the journey, right? Where we came from. So we wanted to talk a little bit about this topic of getting paid to podcast. You know, this is kind of the dream. People um, start a podcast. Um, they have a topic in mind. They want to market it to people. And this is, you know, how do you get to this point where you're getting paid? Maybe it's like starts making up a significant portion of your income, 10%, 20%, 40%, 100%. You know, that's the dream. This is, the I think, a little bit more indicative of the reality. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of podcasts out there. In order to get ad revenue, you're probably looking at tens of thousands of listeners if you're um, appealing to a broad audience. Now, if you have a niche audience and it's the right niche audience, like you only have 300 listeners, but they're the like the CFOs of like 300 of the Fortune 500 companies, you know, then you're probably going to be able to get some <laughs> some ad sales. But like in order to get to that point, you know, you have to have started from a position where maybe that wasn't that important to you, like anyway. So, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, that's, uh, I'm sorry. Did you have something to say there, Nick? Yeah, let me break in with a question. Somebody's mm -hmm. asking how much time did we spend on the 10 initial episodes? I um, bet you it was 15 to 18 hours airtime recording and double that for prep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and that was one of the things that we learned, right? We were recording 90 minute episodes and just going, you know, in retrospect, like that, that's ridiculous, right? That kind of, I, I still think probably like 45 minutes is a little bit long, um, depending on, you know, the commute times of people, but that seems to be like not unreasonable. Um, so if you're going to record a 90 minute episode, you should probably record two 45 minute episodes. And it's yeah. just something that we learned over time. And we had no idea how long we would talk on each section, you know, so maybe yeah. we'd put like three topics when we should have put one or two. Right. Right. That's right. We used to have multi-topic episodes. I would actually forgotten that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. So now oh. we're down to one topic. <laughs> I think I think you're getting it now. John talks a lot. That's what it is. <laughs> that that is it. So again, back to traditional compensation, ad sales. Um, you know that that game. I think that there's you know very few uh, podcasts out there like that can actually survive, and the people can make money doing that, um, make a living doing it, and. You know, it just takes building up like a huge audience 
and you, you know, being a content creator is not an easy job. Um, so I would just not expect ad sales to be part of it. Like I think the people that are making money probably um, have gone through like a traditional radio channel or some other channel like stand up comedy. And, you know, this is just, you know, almost like another outlet and promotion for what they're doing uh, or their production labor. Like you can make money on a podcast, like doing production labor in the background or you can be talent labor. Like again, like that's kind of working for an NPR on an NPR show, like as a, as a host or something like that. And again, you know, that's like the, the top of the, the talent pyramid for that. Right. So, um, you know, that's, it's just really tough, um, you know, to, to kind of expect to make a living. So Nick and I have kind of hit upon this, uh, idea of, alternative compensation and that is you know maybe our podcast is about career enhancement so um you know naturally for us like compensation might find some way of uh, being reflected in our personal career advancement so that's kind of uh, what we're thinking of and i think that um this is the direction that you know i think every time I've been to a podcast meetup and people are talking about how to make money, almost nobody really has, has talked about this. So now it's, it's become my mantra, right? So you can raise your industry profile just by having a podcast covering an industry or covering an idea, right? So you can express your opinions, discuss your opinions, you know, um, the, the instinct there is to be like a little bit more controversial or, or juice up your opinions in order to get uh, people listening to you. I would probably fight that, but it's, it's not bad marketing to say like, you know, um, is this the worst idea ever in the industry? Come and discuss. And then maybe you don't think it's the worst idea, right? Um, that journey to becoming a thought leader. Nick, we've talked about this a little bit, right? Thought leader is really... Um, just somebody who knows a little bit more than you and can discuss it intelligently. Like you don't need to actually be the leader. <laughs> right. So it's probably someone who doesn't claim to be a thought leader. If I had to pinpoint it, Yeah. you know, I, I think some of this is staying humble and being a little bit vulnerable with your audience, being honest. And, you know, we learn a ton from our guests and some of them have said things that just, blew me away. Okay. I never thought about this. And you yeah. said stuff that's had me give me the same reaction. Wow. That's a great point. Never considered it. Yeah. Same, same. So engaging with the community, right? So pe people who are listeners, uh, like yourselves, um, asking questions and engaging with you and saying, Hey, maybe you should cover this. Um, you know, um, we have a guy that we know, uh, Ramsey Marjaba, who has a podcast called We the SEs, We the Sales Engineers. And he's created an entire online community of just sales engineers um, who come in and discuss things in a in a forum as well as listening to the podcast. And he's had people on, you know, we've both been guests on that podcast as well. And we've had him on as a guest. So being able to like interact with the community, like that's a that's a huge benefit too, right? And it's it's compensation that's non-monetary. But, you know, gaining that community can be very, very valuable to you. Um, I think Nick touched on this, right? Access to experts, like, you know, talking to people who are already recognized, you know, thought leaders or they've written the book on something. Or maybe there's somebody that you want to work with in the future and you're just kind of picking their brain on tape about, you know, their industry and what they're doing and how they're learning how they think about things. So, you know, maybe eventually you want to work for that company or for that person, you know, or in the industry in some capacity. And you get to find out from people like what that is like and what you actually need to do to get there. Right. And and similar for peers. Right. We Nick, you and I have done this almost all of these things. Right. Mm -hmm. Had somebody who was in a position of authority on a topic, a peer and, uh, you know, somebody who's like a manager or somebody, you know, like above us working mm -hmm. even in the same company. Oh yeah. It's great. And I mean, you're thinking, what are the questions that I would normally want to ask this person that would 
help somebody else in my position or somebody else in, in a similar position. Absolutely. You know, and, and so you have to put yourself into the mindset of the audience. What can they get out of, you know, talking to this person, not just me, it's, you know, maybe there's going to be a benefit to me, but you know, what is the benefit to the community as a whole? And sometimes, you know, you are just become a me member of that community. Right. So. And what experience have they had that's really interesting that just doesn't happen to everybody. You happen to know about it because you read their blog or know them personally and let them showcase that. And it could help a lot of other people. I think Ramsey is a great, um, just, you know, to shout him out again, he's a great example of that. I think when we talked to him, you know, one of the questions we asked was like, why did you start this podcast? And he said, well, you know, if I just call like, you know, this expert here, the ex expert here, this expert here and say, Hey, can you, you know, like give me an hour and tell me about, you know, summarize like your knowledge about the industry. Like they're just going to say no. But if I call them up and I say, Hey, can I interview about this for my podcast? You know, and the audience is sales engineers, you know, the people that you're targeting for your expertise, um, then they're, you know, way more inclined, you know, in, if you can, back that up with, and, you know, I have a community of people who are like-minded. It's not just me, then it's even more powerful. So he gets, he gets to talk to a lot of people that way. Somebody's commenting that they love your mood music in the background. <laughs> That's right. It's a life in uh, COVID-19 times, right? So um, everybody, it's not just me working from home. My wife works from home as well, and she's a professional flute player and uh, musician. So at the same time that I'm working, She's playing. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, I'll put her uh, her Twitter handle and, and uh, YouTube channel on. So people who want to hire a flute. No. Okay. Nothing to do with that. Um, but peers too. Yeah. Um, so we've got to talk to a lot of people and that's been really exciting. And it's, I think, really helped me, you know, again, in expertise. Um neither Nick or I are managers and we've gotten to interview people who've been in our position and have gone into management, managing our people in our position. And then just people who have gone from individual contributors to managers in other uh, kind of associated lines of business, maybe not at the specific companies that we work at. And it's really interesting to hear about that, you know, management career path. That's something that we want to talk about. So, and, you know, maybe, we individually are even considering, um, but to hear and be able to interview multiple people about that jump and that career decision um, has been really, really interesting. Um, very, very sobering. Someone's asking what platform has been most useful for us to use to engage with our listeners, social media, a blog asked by Blythe Mysteric. What's what you your take think? on that, Nick? You know, I think it depends on the time of day. Sometimes it's Twitter. Sometimes it's LinkedIn. I mean, we do post a blog post for every episode, but as far as publishing just a career-focused blog post, we don't do that a whole lot. I mean, each of us have published one or two on our personal blog, but... I wouldn't say that it's been extremely interactive with the listener audience. What would you say? Um, I would say that's true for like the blog output. Cause you know, the show notes that Nick does, does go out as a blog post. Um, now people have told me individually that that's how they interact with the podcast. Like some people have even said, oh, I didn't know it was a podcast. I thought it was just a blog and <laughs> which was kind of mind blowing to me. Um, because, you know, show notes about thoughts aren't exactly complete thoughts, you know, and so, uh, but, you know, certainly we've gotten interactions that way. Definitely got interactions over Twitter and definitely gotten interactions a little bit more um, like, you know, direct messages and messages on LinkedIn uh, than, you know, generic feedback. Um, but, but even just like feedback on specific uh blogs and you know retweets and with comments that's we've certainly gotten comments on the blog um mm -hmm. and some questions there too so 
have we used Buffer or Meet Edgar for scheduling posts to social media? Um, thought about it. I mean, I have uh, Hootsuite, and I just haven't done it. So um, certainly thought about it. But, uh, you know, I think that would be a very big deal for us if it was any, like a non-zero part of our income. Right, so if it was like income driven, and and it was even like a one hundred dollar difference between, um, uh, you know, doing it and not doing it, then I think I'd probably do it. But uh, it it's you know zero dollars in income, so you know it it just represents not enough money, so not enough effort. But you know, certainly thought about it and probably should do it. It should probably be part of the workflow. So um, additional benefits, you know, build a community um, of people who can refer you, you know, um, especially, you know, this is important in times like this, right? Um, people are losing their jobs or being furloughed. You know, it's a general economic issue, but um, maybe unless, uh, less disastrous times, you know, if the company you work for goes under um, and you've built up a community, then you have an entire community of people who can refer you. And, you know, it's a community that you can give back to, right? So if you know about job openings or somebody asks you about something, then you can, you know, coach them through it, right? Like, you know, I like that just happens to be our topic, um, you know, on career. So, so this happens to be a benefit. If, um, your topic is something else, then maybe, you know, referral means something different to you. For example, if you have a literary uh, discussion podcast, um, maybe your, your industry can't, you know, or sorry, your, your community can refer you to things that are right in your wheelhouse that you've just never gotten a chance to read or you've never even heard of. Right. So um, that's, that's kind of uh, the, the idea here right? Community of referrals. For us, again, raising your work profile. Um, so having a podcast acts as external validation. Um, you know, maybe it's that third point that goes with that. Like you are a podcaster and you've gotten to talk to all these people in the industry, right? So that kind of interaction acts as an external validation for you and doing your job. You have to actually do your job well too. But um, I, th I think that's a, you know, uh, a, an important point. I would say like Nick maybe has gotten a little bit more recognition in that than, than I have. Like your managers actually tweeted out, oh, hey, everybody, have you seen Nick's uh, most recent uh, podcast episodes and, and stuff like that? Am I right about that? Yeah, my manager loves it. Um, one other thing I'll say here is, you know, when you have a guest, on your show, it's not just to interview them and you're finished. You, you're promoting their brand, just like you're promoting the brand of the show when you tweet it out or put it on LinkedIn. And, you know, if you're like, we are, I kind of feel like there's an element of recruitment <laughs> to this. You're looking for people with a good story or a good perspective who could come on the show and, let them tell their story, even if they never thought that they could be a podcast guest. And we'll talk about that later, but you know, you're, it's not necessarily doing them a favor, but that little boost could boost their career too. You never know. So they're, they're probably going to remember that. And maybe later that tees you up to, to ask them for a favor. Maybe there's something they can do for you down the road. Mm -hmm. Get that next job. Oh, remember those guys from Nerd Journey? I bet they would love this. Right, right. And and it also sets up kind of like um, this idea because I I don't think that we necessarily do it as like a, a you know banking of favors. But if you have more people like with the attitude of what can I do to help and what can I do to give back? Because I mean we both got into this you know, position from other people saying, hey, shouldn't you expand a little bit? Hey, have you thought about doing this? You know, hey, have you thought about applying for this job, right? 
in, in kind of gently pushing and guiding and coaching, you know, both of us have been the recipient of that. So if we can do that and just put more positivity out there, then I think like the entire community and the entire world is better. Um, you know, we're just all in a better spot if there's more of that out there. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's probably maybe a little bit of a cliche. It's like, I can't pay back the people who helped me get here, but I can pay it forward by helping other people. Right. Yeah. Someone's asking below, how hard has it been to get guests? What's the process? And is it just an email or something else? Yeah. Um, I think that there was a little bit scattershot at first, right? Um, we were just kind of, hey, wouldn't it be nice to talk to this person about this or talk to this person about this? And over time, I think it was really um, maybe something that I learned at, at a the San Francisco podcast meetup, like, you know, somebody said, if you're going to get guests, you should probably put a one pager together describing what it is that you do, what, you know, the, you know, your core audience and what it is that they're looking for and then how that person's opinion might help that group and, and how you might be able to help them, you know, if they're promoting a book or, you know, they want to raise their profile as a thought leader or, or for whatever reason, you know, whatever benefit. So you, you're kind of describing this, kind of mutual benefit and then maybe an example of questions and in a topic outline that you would ask like that's way more beneficial and like it's easier to say yes to that when someone says here's the audience here's like a you know um we heard you talk about this or uh, maybe you could you know give us an overview of this other thing and here's the benefit to you and um you know here's some you know potential uh times that we can do it like that that's that's easy. I mean, people have asked us to come on their podcast, right, Nick? And it's a little bit tougher to say yes, you know, to that question when it's like, hey, do you want to come on? And do what? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back to the talent scout approach that I like to take. Meeting people in the greater community that you're a part of. If you read something they wrote, as John said, Oftentimes you already have the idea for the things you want them to talk about or think they could talk about. And if you outline that and say, Hey, so-and-so um, maybe you connect with them on LinkedIn first. Uh, I saw this post really enjoyed it. I'd love to connect with you. Then you hit them up about coming on the podcast. Tell them what it is. Tell them a rough idea of what you think they'd be qualified to talk about. And, you know, just say something along the lines of, Hey, let's agree on a rough outline. Here's what I thought of. What would you like to add? And oh yeah, by the way, we don't allow explicit content, so please don't <laughs> use <laughs> expletives on the on the podcast. I know we learned that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that that prep. So I think um with that in mind, um it's been it hasn't been trivially easy, but it hasn't been you know, difficult, right? I think the ideation part of it is like, that's been a little bit harder. What are the topics that we haven't covered yet? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, who do we know that might have a different take on this topic that we have covered that would be complementary to the content that like the last guest said on the same topic. So Nick, is that track? Yeah, I think that tracks pretty well. And I mean, for John and me, I think we're trying to make sure that we reach out to people in different communities, even different occupations outside of technology. We've had some, you know, we had somebody from marketing that I used to work with, someone from HR to give their perspective on career related issues. And I think that's really good to get outside our own company bubbles and even the communities that we're a part of bubbles. Yeah. So I hope that we covered that um, Facebook user. Uh, and if not, uh, feel free to, to follow up. So that kind of, I think we covered the raise your work profile, uh, but maybe just as closing, you know, if you have a job and you're podcasting in a topic that is complementary to that, you know, what you do in that job and you raise your profile, I mean, you're just setting yourself up to, for bigger and better things within that industry, you know, if not at that specific position. Right. So I, th I think that this is like a really powerful thing that most people don't think of. So 
you know, maybe you should be blogging about the job that you're doing, you know, or blogging about the industry, things that you're observing, you know, asking questions, not always just like giving your opinion and then engaging with the community. A podcast is another way to do that, right? To, to have a, a discussion and, uh, you know, talk to somebody directly in an audio format rather than a written format. Um, so, you know, I think that people are always interested in learning about the industry. Like maybe they're learning, interested in learning about getting into the industry or they're a little bit behind you and are interested in what you have to say or a little bit ahead of you and are interested in maybe critiquing what you have to say, which is always, you know, valuable too. Not always valuable, but it can be very valuable. Oh yeah, you said this, but like maybe, you know, you know, if you think about, think it through, you know, actually, you know, in my experience, it's, it's a little bit more this way rather than the way that you were thinking. Um, and you know, that feedback can be very valuable. Yeah. I'm going to self promote for a second. Cause I think this applies. If you go and listen to our episode 61 with Amy Hervey, who's a marketing professional, she talks about blogging, getting started with that, how to engage with people on social media without going overboard. And I think she had some excellent tips for people in any field that need to do some work on social media. I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was terrific. External opportunities. This is maybe a little bit more of a crossover with traditional opportunities. Um, but yeah, once you podcast and there is an audience that you have and you're engaging with the community, people will ask you to be a podcast guest, right? That's not necessarily like a, something that you can get money from, but, you know, dovetailing with raising your profile um, within your industry or at the uh, company that you're at, you know, can be very beneficial. Maybe you're asked to join a panel maybe on the topic that you're discussing. Um, you know, again, the, the literary podcaster joining a, you know, panel at a literary conference, maybe you're asked to, you know, submit a session at a conference and maybe, you know, if that's successful, bigger and bigger conferences. And maybe if you're extremely successful, then you can start to be asked to, to keynote at, at conferences to, you know, maybe open up um, something or, or set a theme, you know, something that you have, you know, become an expert in or are seen as an expert in because of the podcast is, you know, specifically dovetails with a, a, a specific conference and, and they ask you to, to really kind of set the scene and, and set the set the tone for the entire conference. So, you know, those can be paid gigs too, right? So, um, you know, once again, you know, there's, it's kind of a non-traditional way to do it. Um, maybe something to add on here. I, th I think that even like the podcasters that you might think of as being, you know, extremely successful, maybe that like outside of the top 10, a lot of times you'll hear, you know, like a podcast is on tour and they're going to do a live show in your area and they sell tickets like that is like much more of a way for them to make money than, than most people think like that might actually be paying the bills. Um, so finally, uh, I think that we have gotten to the point where any bottle up questions and answers, you know, we can give, uh, would be happy to, uh, to give out here. We um, do have some additional stuff to talk about. Maybe if there are no questions or we've answered all the questions, um, we could talk about, you know, our experience with equipment, our experience with software and recording and the pre-production process, um, post-production process. Um, yeah, okay. I know that we're on a little bit of delay, so I want to give maybe uh, 10 or 15 more seconds. But um, I think, you know, answering questions online has been, you know, pretty beneficial. And I'm going to move on. But if you have uh, additional questions, feel free to, I was going to say shout out, but uh, type out, I guess. Oh, here we, here we go. When you first started, how did you frame your audience participation? How did it grow over time? Yeah. What do you think about that, Nick? Is that code for, I need time to think about it, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, audience participation. Um, 
I guess I don't quite know how to answer that. Like our pro profile for what the audience is. Okay. Like I kind of, I kind of imagined like the audience as being small business IT professionals. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know what the size of that audience is. Um, you know, I certainly told everybody that I knew about it. Um, so yeah, initially we did have nobody in that audience. Right. Um, I think that you have to be fine with that and not use your audience size as a metric of success. Um, yeah. How do you, how do you convince people to be a guest? You know, uh, I think it was the first guest that was the difficult one, right? But it's a little bit easier to say, um, we've just talked between the two of us. I want to say for the first 12 episodes, maybe mm -hmm. 10 or more. Um, so we were able to build an audience just by word of mouth and plugging into the Twitter communities that we were already members of. So I, I mean, even to this day, you know, I think like, hundred downloads in the first week is kind of like a good week for us. So it's again, not necessarily the size, it's like the long tail of the total number of people who you're going to interact with and say, Oh, Hey, you should listen to this episode. You know, we gave like this person gave really good advice. Like that's way more important. So to, t to convince somebody to come on and have this discussion, you know, if you do really good preparation, you know, and say, like, hey, you know, this is the point of view that we think that you can bring on. Um, this is why it's valuable. If it's 20 people that are going to listen or 50 people or 100 people, you know, people are interested in giving their opinion, especially if that opinion and what they're writing is kind of evergreen. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think that's an issue so much. Yeah, we haven't haven't found anyone who just said flat out no to coming on because the audience size wasn't big enough. I have had people ask how big it was. And I think maybe they were just looking to am amplify their brand a bit more, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it has, it's not a, it's not been a big deal. Like I said, once you start getting in the groove, you're going to be on the lookout for people to interview, assuming you want to have guests, you know, some podcasts may not have guests at all. You may decide that that's not a thing you want to learn how to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I think Mike is asking, what do we use for the interviews? And um, if that's the case, maybe we can get into like, you know, the appendix is what I talk about. Maybe some of the technical details of how we do what we do. Uh, Nick and I, I think maybe I didn't say this, but Nick is in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I'm in the Bay Area. So we've been in the same room recording the podcast twice, I want to say, Nick. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Once when I was in, I just happened to be in Dallas, Fort Worth on business. And then once when we were both at the same conference. Um, so remote, you know, interviews are something that we've that's been kind of our bread and butter. So just, I think we covered pre-production, you know, talking about getting guests, interview planning, guest prepping, like all of that is critically important in, um, you know, building up that stuff and, and having those skills in the one pager, the kind of like one page pitch for why you should be on the podcast is going to help you get guests. Um, one, one thing I'll add here is that some guests want a lot more prep and structure than others. Sure. You know, if you have people who are used to talking and, you know, conference speaking, that kind of stuff, they're probably okay with a rough structure, a few things that they're definitely going to cover and just let it flow from there. <laughs> we always tell our guests that if you create an interesting rabbit hole, we're going to chase you down it to get the good content. And that's generally what happens. You know, there have been some times where we've put together a rough outline of where we thought we would go and we got some stuff that we never expected to get. And it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you just have to be okay with 
letting that happen, right? And if that means like what you thought you were going to cover ends up being in like the second episode, you know, and split into two parts or the third episode split into three, then just be okay with that, right? If you have like this clear vision, so this is more of like a journalistic approach. Like a journalistic approach is to know the tape that you need before you even walk into the room. So you're trying to get like specific things, you know, you've done enough pre-interviews with a person ahead of time to know what the story is and you want them to say like the specific words in a specific way that you've heard them use before. So you need that specific tape. That's not really what we're doing, right? Um, we're not journalists. We're we're hobbyist podcasters, right? So we're nerds. <laughs> just two nerds on a journey. That's right. Now, <laughs> someone's asking, do we give guests the questions beforehand? So yes and no. We, like I, like we mentioned, we do send most guests a list of questions we think we would ask them. Let them give feedback. Do they want to ask some? Do they not want to answer some? And then we just tell them, hey, we'll we'll try and stick to this flow. But something interesting may come up and we may ask you a question that you didn't prep for. Just know that going into it. And most people are cool with that. It just depends on how nervous the person is about coming in to the show. If they've never done it before, they may have a fear. So they may want it really structured, no surprises. And that's okay. If that's what you need to do to make the guests feel comfortable, then you should you should absolutely do that. Just set the expectation with them up front and I think it'll work out to your benefit. And if they want to do a, you know, a practice session that's not recorded just to talk through it, that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, again, we're not journalists, so I think probably journalistic standards would be to not, you know, give people questions before you're doing like a journalistic interview, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to do like an advice podcast, right? So having a person not prepared to, to answer a question is not actually to our benefit, right? If we think that they, you know, have something interesting to say about something, you know, because we've heard them say it before, we just want their take on it. We want the, to give them the opportunity to do that. If what you're trying to do is create a journalistic uh, podcast, then you're going to have a different standard than what we use. So then you probably need to study, study you know, journalistic standards for, and, you know, operate the way a journalist would operate. It just depends on the industry that you're in. Yeah. One thing I want to mention, Elizabeth has Hedgepath mentioned they went from guest driven to guest free episodes mm -hmm. and enjoy both. We do actually a mix. Sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. I think we have more episodes without guests than with guests, but it's nice to have that mix. We think. Yeah. Someone else is asking, have we ever interviewed someone who ended up being horrible? What did we do? And did we still post it? Well, John inter interviewed me this one time. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, I, don't, uh, I don't think that that's happened to us. No, um, I don't think it has. You know what? We had to throw away an interview once because the audio was bad. And we just re-recorded it on, on a different format. But I don't think we've ever had a guest who just was a bad interview. Maybe that's just luck of the draw. Yeah. Um, you know, I suppose you could edit around that kind of thing. Um, but if somebody is just, you know, can't give coherent answers or they're boring to listen to, you know, and they don't have any vocal variation and they just talk like this all the time without any, you know, then that's no good, right? But, you know, hopefully you do a little bit of prep ahead of time. And if you have to not run an interview, then that's just what you do, um, unfortunately. Um, we just haven't run into that, so I don't know what to say. Um, we're just great at getting guests. That's just me. <laughs> right. I, honestly, a lot of times, a lot of the people that we talk to, we've already heard them speak, right? We've already heard them speak in public. We've already heard them on somebody else's interview. So that's just hasn't been an issue, um, and that's just you know, the pool that we're, we're drawing from, you know, or they're professional speakers, you know, like they're kind of in our industry, you know, in the sales engineering, a lot of what you do is speak in front of people and, and teach people about something. So, 
you know, a lot of times that's the, the crowd that we're running in. I'll talk about equipment a little bit more. Um, hopefully this is advice that um, is helpful to people. I think that early on you can disappear into this like, oh, I need to buy all this equipment whole and you know, your budget explodes. And I just don't think that, that that's really worth it. Like it makes sense to invest in equipment over time we bought these like hundred dollar mics, these ATX 2100s. Um, it has a USB interface if you want to plug it directly into your computer. It has an XLR interface if you want to eventually plug it into a, a mixing board or something like that, a mic arm and a pop filter. And that's, I think, all the equipment that we use. We happen to use cameras as well because um, we have that uh, that capability to, to interact on the platform we use. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, it's really important to record multi-track. Uh, we happen to use Squadcast. I think that Zoom has the capability to do that as well. What I mean is that every single person who's on the interview has their own audio track recorded separately. So if somebody accidentally coughs into the microphone, because you have the three tracks together uh, separate, you can just mute the one track in in post production, or if somebody you know sneezes or their chair is super squeaky, then you can just mute out that part of that track while the other person is talking. If you record everything into one track, you're stuck with what what you get. So that's pretty important, I would say. Well, and can you comment, John, on the way Squadcast captures the audio and who it goes to? Blythe is asking if we have our guests record on their side and send it to you, or do we record everyone and auto send it to us? Yeah. So that, that, um, uh, what Blythe is uh, describing is a very traditional radio uh, method called, uh, the double ender, which where say I'm in one radio station interviewing somebody in a different radio station, like both people will record their own audio and those in their radio stations. And then, They'll get it'll get sent to the editor to edit it together. Um, the benefit of the Squadcast platform um, is that um, every single person's audio gets automatically recorded on their machine, kind of in the the Chrome uh, buffer, and then it'll get uploaded at the end, uh, or progressively if you have extra bandwidth, or at the very end, at the end of the interview, you just stay on a little bit, and each person's high quality local recording. Um, uh, high quality audio gets uploaded. And, and that is, you know, one of the benefits of using that platform. Zoom, I think does it a little bit differently. I think it gets recorded in the cloud. So if the person's on like a low bandwidth connection, then you have a slight disadvantage because then you're going to get that bandwidth constricted audio. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, Squadcast is kind of a cool platform. It's, um, that's another thing that we spend money on. I think it's like $15 a month or something like that. Pretty inexpensive. And if you stop your podcast, then cancel your subscription, right? Um, that's the benefit of not um, investing tons and tons of money into gear. Um, production software, again, like, you know, if, if it becomes part of your per, per profession, um, then maybe you want to start investing money into software. Um, we haven't done that yet. Audacity is an open source uh, multi-platform piece of software. You can get that for uh, on Mac. Um, you can get it on Windows. I think you can even get it on Linux if that's what you're running as your desktop. Um, but it's a free uh, multi-track like editing suite that you know. There's lots of uh, YouTube videos on how to use it. So that's what I did. Um, we haven't really paid anybody to do that, but you could, you know, as an alternative, hire somebody on a kind of a gig basis to do your post-production editing. Um, so that's kind of uh, our workflow. We prepare, we record, you know, post-production, like the production stuff, and then the publishing too. Yeah, Blythe, um, Blythe is saying that they record um, uh, 
two pr- people in the same studio and you're looking to add guests. Yeah. So, you know, the, when you have just two people, if you're, you, there's kind of a trick, like you can record one person onto a right hand channel of, of a stereo um, track and then record the other person onto the left hand channel. Um, so if, you know, that's kind of like the, 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 uh, the cheap way to do it. You know, if you don't even want to pay for something like Squadcast, but, um, you know, I, I would just say it's worth, you know, 15 bucks uh, a month, you know, to dip your toe and in, into that. I think they even have a free trial or something like that. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, Ben, I think is yeah. saying the, uh, uh, the low bandwidth, uh, does construct zoom. Yeah. I, that's my impression. I don't think that I've ever used zoom that way. Um, but yeah, I, I can definitely see how that, that would happen. Um, the last thing I think we want to say about, you know, just in our appendix, if there's not other questions is the publishing. Um, these are things that I've learned again from other experts in podcasting, not because I'm an expert, you know, but we've gone to other meetups and this is kind of my digest of the stuff that we've come, come to, uh, own your own domain, you know, paying for that is fairly cheap. Um, own your own feed. You have to like be the owner of that RSS feed. Um, you know, so it's like your podcast.com slash feed, you know, you have to be the one in control of that. If you outsource that to somebody else, then that group, whoever's doing it, they're the ones who actually have the podcast, not you. You might be, uh, doing the content, but they, they own the podcast, they control the podcast. So, um, if they want to drop an ad in to your podcast, you know, on that feed, they can do it and you don't have any control. That's no good. The actual software that we're using, I think I said before, WordPress, there's a plugin called Blueberry and they, uh, for free, it's a free plugin and you can just, you know, turn the kind of traditional WordPress uh, feed into a podcast feed. Very, very easy to use. Um, You can buy hosting for WordPress um, if you want to. That can be fifteen, twenty dollars a month or more. Um, I thought it's actually fairly easy to host self-host. So you're just paying for a machine, and then you install WordPress. Not even install. There's packages of you know already pre-installed WordPress that you can just deploy to like Google Cloud or Amazon or or Azure, um, and then you have a WordPress that, that costs like five bucks a month. Then just install Blueberry on your own. Very, very easy. Um, I, I keep on saying that I'm going to write a blog post on how to do that, but so maybe this will be the, my motivation. I it goes in John's follow. aspirational bucket. Yeah, <laughs> I have about a five percent hit. Remember that. Um, and then I think Nick said this. We we practiced, right? We recorded probably ten episodes, and we threw away a bunch of that content. Um, but uh, as noted here, we did get a little bit paralyzed. It was the how to publish, you know, where do we host WordPress? Like what's the best format for doing that? Um, I fell down a little like technical uh, rabbit hole there. And uh, Nick finally kicked me in the button and goes like, what are we doing here? Like what, what's the problem? And I was like, oh, it, yeah, no, we should just keep it simple. And uh, we did that. And then there's show notes. We talked about the details we put in them a little bit. But special says is asking, what are the most important things to put in the show description, John? What do you think there? You're like the hmm. metadata master. I think, yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. The most important things to put in the show description. I think that you want, if you're talking about the podcast description, then you want people to understand what the general topic and theme of the podcast is just from reading that description. Am I part of the target audience? Would it be interesting for me, even if I'm not the target audience to listen to that podcast in general, right? If you're talking about the episode description, then I think that you want to have what is being discussed, like in a nutshell within like, you know, again, the, the number of the character limit of Twitter, you should be able to describe why somebody 
wants to listen to that podcast episode. You know, if there's a specific guest who's discussing a specific topic, then you should include that kind of thing. You know, and if you're covering a specific theme, you know, like work-life balance, you know, then that should be included. Um, I wouldn't really recommend like keyword stuffing, you know, that doesn't really make any sense, but you know, the things that are actually relevant that are core to that discussion, those should be in there because that's how people can find your podcast episode in, in crazy ways. Right. So if you're doing, again, I'll just use the classic, like literary podcast. I don't know how many of those are out there, but you cover a specific book, but the, you know, and it's call of the wild, but you're really, what you're doing is talking about self-resiliency and, and survivalism, you know, then, you know, you want to make sure that you cover those things in the description of the podcast, because that you're using the book as a way to get into that discussion. You know, for us, if Nick and I are interviewing somebody and they are talking specifically about making the transition from being an individual contributor to a manager and the pros and cons and all the things that you should discuss, then we want to say transition from individual contributor to manager, you know, pros and cons of becoming a manager. Like all of those things are, are really important to say. Mike, how are we doing on time? I think, uh, you know, Nick is going to point out that, you know, this is my, my long windedness can, can get us everywhere. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Um, your long windedness, windedness is doing well. And remember, don't over edit. People are, <clears throat> I think I've heard this from other folks who do a podcast. Yes, you want to edit stuff that sounds bad out, but you don't have to edit out every um or uh or second of silence where somebody needs time to think. And for John and me, I know that one thing we've noticed is hard to do is avoid using filler words to give you time to think. I know that I'm guilty of doing that. So I think that we're not great at it, but keeping that stuff in and listening back to it and how painful it is to hear yourself say the same phrase over and over again, and you know that you're just stalling for time when you say that, it forces you to be better about it when you're recording in general, right? So that's what we do. We don't take out the filler words. We don't take out, I mean, if something sounds bad, like you just, there's like an easy edit to take out 30 seconds of filler. Well, I don't know. It just seems like, blah, blah, you know, and there's just, there's nothing there. Then we'll take that out. And if you have fun mess ups and bloopers, save those for stingers, like after the exit music, after the outro music. <laughs> oh we, yeah. We've had some, some really fun moments that, that John put in as a, a little blooper highlight reel at the very end of the podcast. Yeah. I don't even know if anybody listens to those, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe it's just for me and Nick. <laughs> That's fun, though. That's fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it adds personality, too, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. More connection. Elizabeth Hedgepeth says that they added out sneezes, weird mouth noises, reduced, <laughs> reduced long pauses, but otherwise you can make a conversation sound too sterile. Yeah, that's great. Good advice. Yeah, I remember going to a different meeting and somebody saying a specific podcast sounded strange. And then they realized that the person, the editor was editing out every single instance where the person took a breath. So you don't get like kind of the natural pauses of a person talking and it just sounds strange. I mean, you don't necessarily know what it is about it that's strange until you realize exactly why. But yeah, I would definitely not keep a sneeze in unless it was hilarious. A hilarious sneeze might go in at the end. <laughs> we had some some great, great mistakes that we put in the end, like Nick, Nick's pointed out. Just um, 
I think that if either of us, you know, makes a mistake in recording, uh, sometimes it's funny, right? And you just find it funny and you can't stop laughing at it. And then we'll just put that in all the laughing, like not, not in the live version, but in, you know, we'll exit and then we'll put in like just a moment of, of static and then we'll go to the blooper reel. Right. And not every episode, but I actually, I think I, I tag it in the metadata and I say there's a stinger in this episode. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I recently um, edited a podcast for a friend and I used Descript not to edit it, but just, to, I just was testing it out. You've heard of Descript where it puts in the, um, it gives you, it transcribes it for you and then you can pull out the, anyway, it has a thing for filler words and I hit a button to see how many filler words and he, he, he hates listening to himself talk, but he does say, um, a lot just when you're talking to him, but there were like 500 and something ums. And so with that program, you can pull them all out. And so I pulled them all out and I sent it to him. Oh, I pulled all your ums out, you know, and I did it like in a split second. Cause you know, it just does it for you, but it sounded horrible horrible it was just so unnatural but so he's working on his umps anyway it's like listening to it on 1.5 speed yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty was, yeah. so you just sent him like 30 seconds of um 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 <laughs> no no um, i um, no i had um, no i pulled them I, that I, would be I, awesome that would be awesome but they didn't have that option <laughs> uh. oh, oh so you mean it I, just I, kind I of like no, I, they pull all the ums out, so it pulled it. them all out. Yeah, so it was just like. And did you say it sounded bad? With, it sounded with terrible. The ums? Yeah, because of the breath sounds and stuff, it just wasn't natural. It was okay. Like, yeah. You say um, but you're also taking a breath while you're saying um, so it wasn't. It's called Descript. Like D E S C R I P T. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's an interesting program. It's like because uh, you can edit out the. It's like a like a document above it with all the transcript, and you can edit out the words, and it pulls it out of the audio file. Oh, yeah. right, right. It's pretty funky, but it's a neat thing to use for just doing transcripts too. If you want mm -hmm. a quick transcript, because I did that with him, and then I sent him the transcript, and he was editing out big sections of it because he was asking this person. It was an hour and a half podcast too of him asking them questions, and then he just you know wanted big chunks of it taken out, so it was handy. Yeah, I think maybe we didn't explicitly say that. Um, but uh, we do talk to our guests about um, editing, right? Not just the, the questions ahead of time, but we also say, hey, you know, we're going to give you the raw audio before we edit it. And you can listen to it and say, if there's anything on here that you don't like, or you're like, oh, I mentioned the company I work for in a negative light or a specific incident. And in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. We'll take all that out for them. It's part of the guest acquisition strategy, you know, to make them feel comfortable and like, you know, um, relax into being conversational. But again, we're not gotcha journalists, so it's not, you know, anything. I, I think we've had to do that maybe twice. Yeah, maybe I specifically remember one interview where I asked a gentleman something and I could tell once it left my mouth that he was uncomfortable answering it, but he answered it anyway. And then he asked us to take it out. And OK, sure. Yeah. It's never yeah. meant to make you feel uncomfortable. So we'll we'll get it out of there. Yeah. And we also tell our guests, like if they if they talk themselves into a dead end that they can just say, oh, wait, let me start that section over. And then the, we give them the best way to do that, you know, so that it can edit cleanly, <laughs> you know, back up, leave a moment of silence, and then start talking. Um, so there's a clean edit point. And um, that's very, very helpful. By, by the way, I, I should note, like, um, listening to yourself on tape is the best way to get feedback on the things that you need to improve while podcasting, as far as like vocal technique, um, using filler words, those kinds of things. Uh, if you don't listen to it, you will not know what you're doing wrong. I I told a, a podcasting a friend of mine, you can always tell 
who the editor is if it's a two-person podcast because one of the people will constantly turn away from the mic and you'll get lots of these and and then they'll talk away from like this and the other person will be consistently on the mic you know who's the editor the person who turns away all the time is not the editor because they don't know how bad that sounds <laughs> or the editor didn't tell them well you can tell somebody over and over again but if they never listen to it <laughs> then they'll never hear it yeah it's always, it's always great to give them those headset mics too to use because then they can't back away or anything they're Oh yeah, that's a really yeah. that's a really good. Yes, we do thought. that with our clients. Send them the actual headset mic to put on, so they don't move around. And in fact, I had another one of my clients today say that. How come he he sounds like he's so far away? Well, he is far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He lives on the other side of the internet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much. Where do you have a slide that's all your information on here? Or do you want to just, it's, I said it out a to million times. Yeah. Oh, perfect. This, yeah. this is us. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, add us on LinkedIn or follow us on Twitter, happy to engage in any conversations. If anybody wants to ask uh, questions in a slightly more private way, or you're watching this, you know, after we're no longer live and you want to ask some questions, happy to answer those questions as well you know it's it's you know our 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 answers from podcasting are kind of like our answers from career you know it's some of it is stuff that we've learned um over time but a lot of it is you know th the questions that we've had answered for us <laughs> by coming to these kinds of podcast meetups so we're happy to you know pass that along our experience and this and the advice that we're just you know, nakedly stealing from other people who gave us the advice. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, guys. It's been great. And uh, we don't have to run away, but um, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, opportunity yeah. to run away if you wanted to run away. But I, I think Nick I has to run. I actually do have to run away and put a, take care of bedtime. Well, I know that's... Uh, Nick, run, Nick lives in the future. Right. I do live in the future where <laughs> that's kids true, that do. need to do distance learning tomorrow need to go to bed. So, uh, yeah. Okay. But I can stay on if there's any additional questions or just to chat. Thanks so much, everybody. It was great meeting you all. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Well, that was fun. Thank you so yeah. much, John. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. There seems to be some people still here, so they might have more questions. I wonder sure. how long how long are you gonna uh, how how long when you guys started this did you think the nerd journey will be how long will the journey be do you think I think that you know we got different pieces of feedback right there's there's going to be if you can get to twenty episodes then that's one threshold and if you can get to a hundred that's another threshold right mm -hmm. so we're at eighty something right now and um, so we're starting to approach that hundred episode I. I thought if we can do 20, then we can do 100. And yeah. that, you know, that there was, a, well, first of all, the first psychological barrier was one. Just getting the first Always. episode out is, yeah. you know, that was uh, probably a six month delay between when we recorded something for the first time and then when we actually hit publish was six months. And we had over 10 episodes banked at that point. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't actually produced, I produced a ton of podcasts for other people, but not my own. And it's, you know, I did it for so long. I did it for 10 years weekly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I don't remember, it's like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of podcasts, but it's just recently I just started working on two of them. And um, I just remember when it ended, how nice it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was really great like i loved it loved doing it and i loved all the people i met and it was fantastic but that first week when i didn't have anything to do it was like it didn't have it hanging on my head and it's been mm -hmm. three three years now so it's been kind of kind of funny to be but now i'm itching to do one so i have two of them yeah. that i've been working on so nice yeah. well you know before we leave i just want to make sure to give credit to all of the advice that i've gotten from the meetups that I've gone to, the 
Oakland podcast meetup, the San Francisco podcast meetup. It's just, you know, a wealth of information, experienced people, you know, alternate, you know, ideas and, and thoughts that, you know, from people have had from experience, you know, that you just don't have. And uh, even some advice that I didn't take that I went, oh, wait, no, I should have taken that advice. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I really like the, the meetups. They're fun just because, yeah. you know, you spend so much time doing this stuff by yourself, too. And then it's like it's cool to be around other people like that do it, that do the yeah. same thing. And exactly. now that it's getting so popular, it's kind of crazy, you know. Uh, like everybody and their mother has a podcast, it seems like nowadays. <laughs> but, you know. Everybody and their mother would be the, a great title for a podcast. <laughs> You'd have to figure out the topic, but uh, yeah, everybody and their mother. It's either that or a college radio band, right? Yeah, I think that's what people cease to say. Yeah, that's the name of your band, right? That's a great <laughs> name for a band, but now they say that's a great name for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right. right. Well, John, thank you again. I hope to see you when this yeah, is all, definitely. When all this craziness is over with. Uh, well, it would be it would be really out. cool to be able to meet everybody in person, you know. Yeah. And I think that maybe we can help build up this community by doing some of these, you know, meetups remote, and um, maybe we can do it on Zoom. Just you know, maybe with even no specific topic in mind, just roundtable, you know, problem solving for people. And uh, we we did do that two weeks ago, and it was really fun. Oh, okay. Like just people came on and chatted and everybody had a cocktail in their hand and we're just talking and it nice. was nice. Yeah. And I'm hoping to do one of those a month. So very cool. And keep doing these talks too, but like figuring Tuesday nights are the night to do these. So, Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. I'm, I, I must not be watching my meetup. Well, uh, it's also, I'm, as enough. you, as you saw from this one, I've been not, the switchover has been difficult for me to, uh, Oh, yeah. All my ducks in line for this. Oh, so, I totally, totally like, understand. Yeah. This stream yard thing we're using is pretty, it was been fun to use, but I agree yeah. having everybody come in. And I think you can have six people in this, though. So people could actually come in mm -hmm. here. So um, anyway. If you do a Zoom meeting, though, like, well, it's not recorded, or I mean, I suppose you could even record it, too. It doesn't really matter if you record them, though, really. Yeah. But to have all the people be able to talk to each other, that's. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and like Ben, who's in here still, mm -hmm. ben, um, he is moving to Sacramento and we started doing meetings up there. So we yeah, did yeah. Two, two up there and they were really fun. It's so nice. funny to meet a whole new crop of people came in. They were all excited, mm -hmm. you know, oh, it's, it was pretty fun. Yeah. 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 So I actually wanted to go to the very first one and I was like, oh, I just can't like on that day, I cannot drive up to Sacramento yeah. that evening. And so I just couldn't make it, but I'd love to be able to, to go up just to, just to join in on the conversation. Yeah. At some point. guy, Johnny Flores, who I met, who lives up there and he has a pot, he does pod, pod, podcast producing and I, he's kind of running them. So I don't mm. have to go up there every time. Mm. But Well, I mean, if it's virtual now, maybe I guess I can join in. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what one this one is. This is Silicon Valley one. So there's kind of, I was trying to kind of keep them going on the same night. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes um, sense. Yeah, but hey, your wife is great. It was nice when your wife <laughs> when the flute came on. I was all like, I was looking around like I was checking all my open like tabs and stuff. Like, where's that music coming from? Is that in my head? But it's so nice. Now my, uh, you know, we don't have kids though, so there's no kid who can come marching in. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. that uh, BBC, the <laughs> guest on BBC. Yeah. But my my new goal is to break in on somebody else's podcast exactly like those kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> or a video call. There's video a lot conference. of that going on these days, huh? Yeah. A lot of that going on. That's funny. All right. Well, awesome. We should call it a night. I actually go have to put a kid to bed myself. Yeah. So um, awesome. Thanks again, John. Thank you, everybody else, for coming on. And I guess we have another meeting. Actually, next time, too, is a pretty interesting person who is coming on and i'm blanking on their name which i should have had that right up here but um he wrote some cool stuff for pod news um does like storytelling kinds of podcasting stuff um uh, dramas and stuff but his Sean... so scripted that's really cool yeah uh yeah. Um, 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 i'm so sorry i don't have it up here right now but i'm finding it I, I think that's a really cool new outlet, right? So 
that's a it's an entire you know creative outlet for people who are you know you know it's kind of like you know a throwback to like the radio drama right or again like um poetry or you know lit, you know spoken word literature like any of those things it's 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 very very interesting to to get back to a place where that's relevant again that's really cool yeah his name is sean howard and he's gonna he's he he works at a network and does a bunch of stuff like that. And so I I, I read a, a thing about him. Uh, he did a thing for Pod News. Just smart guy. He's a producer, a writer, a comedy guy, voice actor. Um. But yeah, so he should be interesting. Check out. Very cool. That's on the twenty first. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay, John. Thank you, everybody. See you, Mike. We'll see you, everybody. Later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. My pleasure.